An astronaut, a physicist, and mathematician are all vacationing in Scotland aboard a train. Outside their train window, they observe a single black sheep in a field. The astronaut exclaims, look, all Scottish sheep are black. The physician corrects him, no, only some Scottish sheep are black. And the mathematician ponders, waiting for the train to pass. And eventually he says, gentlemen, in Scotland there exists one field that it has at least one sheep, at least one side of which is black. I, heard, I first read this joke in a book entitled The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets, written by this man, Simon Sign. I don't remember being exactly amused, but I do remember how intriguing it was and how it emphasized the restrictive nature of mathematics and how the common sense and reasoning that comes from the scientific fields of astronomy and physics just don't apply to math. Today, I want to talk about a certain area of mathematics that has more or less become a recreational playground of unsolvable problems and unanswerable questions. This is, of course, the conceptualization of infinity. When we think of infinity at first, we might picture a number unreachable on the number line or bigger than any other. But really, it is more of a quality than a quantity in itself used to describe unending scenarios or infinitely many things. So what is infinity? How does it work? How can it be used? Or how can it be avoided? What mathematicians do to answer these questions is they create special scenarios for themselves. These scenarios require a very special property to change our understanding of what infinity is. After all, if we keep thinking of it in the same way, then our understanding will never change. Perhaps the most common use of infinity is to describe expressions like this one. This is what we call an infinite sum, where we start with one number, then add another one, and add another number, and so on forever, and we never stop increasing our total value. And in this par particular sum, we have one half plus one quarter plus one eighth forever, and somehow we end up at one, a finite value. Our total is always increasing, and yet it does not reach infinity. This requires, this possesses the very specific scenario that I mentioned earlier. Allow me to present another scenario that takes advantage of the freedoms of mathematics called Thompson's lamp. Here we have a lamp. It can be turned on and off like a basic lamp, and it can be only on or off at any moment in time. This lamp is programmed to turn on and off at very specific times within the span of one minute. At the start of the minute, the lamp is on. After exactly one half minute, the switch is flipped and it turns off. After a quarter minute, it turns back on. An eighth of a minute, it turns off. So you see the pattern. After exactly one half the remaining time expires, the switch is flipped and the lamp changes its state. So this goes on until one minute is reached. And after one minute, is it possible to tell whether the lamp is on or off? Well, if we think about it, each time the lamp is turned on, it is then immediately turned off again and vice versa. If, when it is turned off, it is then immediately turned back on again. So which one is it? What have we done? Is it both, neither, or is it on or off? We can do nothing but sim simply guess. What we've done is done in infinitely, infinitely many things in a finite amount of time. This is called a Zenoian supertask, named after the mathematician Zeno. Doing an infinitely, infinitely many things in a finite amount of time does not let us answer whether Thompson's lamp is on or off, but it does allow us to change our concept of infinity into more of a mathematical idea than a physical one. If we were to do the Thompson's lamp experiment again, except following the laws of nature, then I would merely turn the lamp on or off at intervals of one minute, but I would never be able to answer the question of what happens after I've done that infinitely many times. Another paradox that results from the use of infinity and the Zinoian supertask is called the Ross Littlewood paradox. Suppose we start with a sheet of paper and what we want to do is write down infinitely many numbers on that sheet of paper. At step one, we write the numbers one through 10 and then erase the smallest number, which is one. At step two, we do the same for 11 through 20, and then erase two. As you can see, at each step, 
we have nine more numbers on the page than we had the previous step, a net gain of nine. Yet after we do this infinitely many times, the final result is a blank sheet of paper. So how is this possible? How can we write infinitely many numbers and write nine numbers more on the page each time and yet have a blank sheet at the end of the page? This is because we were erasing the numbers. No matter how many numbers we had written initially, if we erase infinitely many numbers, we erase all of them. Now, another way of doing this task, which is very similar, is only writing the first nine numbers and then multiplying the smallest by 10 at each step. Here we've written one through nine and then multiplied one by 10 to make it 10. We do the same thing for 11 through 19 and multiply two by 10 to make it 20. On the left and the right, both sides show the exact same numbers. However, after we've done this infinitely many times, the results are drastically different. On one side, we have a blank sheet of paper, and on the other side, we have infinitely many numbers followed by infinitely many zeros. This is a very famous paradox in mathematics that occurs from the use of affinity. So while in the physical world, there will be never exist a measurable quantity that reaches infinity. While simultaneously in mathematics, it creates endless paradoxes left and right. However, in mathematics, the escape from the physical restrictions of nature are really what makes it its own sandbox, where mathematicians can answer all kinds of questions, whether they can be answered or not. This sandbox is what ma makes mathematics not what it is usually thought of, a world of black and white, or correct or incorrect, but instead a field of study where we can ask whatever questions we want to about the possible, the impossible, the finite, and the infinite. Thank you.